It is Saturday evening at the Bernhout family home. Dr. and Mrs. Bernhout have prepared dinner for their children and grandchildren. As the lights come on, we see that three quarters of the stage to the right is the dining room that is parallel to you, the audience. There is a liquor cabinet in the dining room that contains a bottle of Grey Goose vodka and other liquors. A partition with a door separates the dining room from the foyer and the home entrance, which is to the left. There is a door in the middle of the rear section of the dining room. Dr. Bernhout is standing in front of the dining room table. I, well, I, I told Sarah that, uh, I told her that uh, the table looked beautiful. Ah, say a shame. It looks so beautiful, Sarah. But she wasn't there. She was in the kitchen. Anyway, and the food, the food smells so good. Ah, ah. This, ah, smell it, ah, ah, very good. So, the smells delicious, the brisket, she made kukukul, stuffing, carrots, oy. She went all out. Sarah always knows what to make whenever we have company. She's had a lot of training over the years, you know, raising three children and uh, several grandchildren. Anyway, Sarah came in, and I asked her, please sit down, Sarah, so I could tell her about what happened with Cory. The meeting, you remember, on Friday. So I said, stop, please, Sarah. She came in. I, oh, then I grabbed my back and, oh, God, just thinking about it kills my back again. Ah, probably from all the stress of this, Sarah. Anyway, listen to this. Corey came by Friday morning for what he thought was a very important meeting. He, you know, he told me it's going to be important. I got to speak. He's got to speak to me. Boy, was he correct. No. Nope. A major healthcare corporation is purchasing a hospital. Go, to, go figure. They plan to close it because they believe that they have enough psychiatric inpatients beds within the city. Sarah thought it was foolish to do, and so of course so did I. Don't you? I didn't respond to Corey in a very nice way, Sarah. In all likelihood, this soon-to-be new owner, listen to this, the Mount Everest Healthcare Corporation, they don't get higher than this. Will probably, at least on this earth, they'll probably let me go. She was shocked. I didn't know how and when to tell you, darling, because given your worry about Daniel, I, I didn't want to say anything. Corey asked me if I considered, listen to this, retiring from the practice of psychiatry altogether. I told him that question was downright discriminatory. So Sarah asked me what I was going to do once I was let go. I'm not sure yet, but I'm clear that I don't want to just be a pill pusher. That wasn't for me. And it's not for psychiatrists anyway. Sarah agreed, and she knew that there were better ways to uh, care for others than that. She was just sorry she couldn't join me in retirement for three more years. I didn't expect her to. All of a sudden, we hear a knock. Ah, that must be the kinder. And uh, anyway... Uh, Sarah asked me what I was going to tell the children. I said, the truth, of course. Why not the truth? It's always the best thing to share. So our daughter Brenda, her husband Mark, and our grandson Jesse, you remember him, arrived first. Hello, darling Brenda. Oh, I gave her a big kiss and a hug. Mm -hmm. Hello, Mark. I gave him a nice hug, too. He's like your family. I looked at Jesse, I said, oh, he had the glasses on. I said, oh, sunglasses, uh, even though it's 9 o'clock at night, or 8 o'clock at night, it's getting dark already. Oh, hey, uh, man, Jesse, you look real cool with those shades on. Oh, boy. Anyway, Brenda told us that Jesse had an invitation to sleep over his friend Michael's house that night, but uh, Mark and her agreed that Jesse could do that some other weekend night. He wasn't a happy camper. No. So anyway, I said to them, can I get you, all of you, some drinks? Uh, Brenda and Mark wanted a glass of wine. And no, Jesse says that he wants to have an apple martini with rocks on the side. Uh, I think you're a bit too young uh, uh, for that kind of drink, uh, Jesse. How about some apple juice on the rocks? Jesse says to me, listen to this, okay, as long as I can bring him some Grey Goose on the side. 
I'm sorry, Jess. I can try getting you a cooked goose, but not a gray one. Anyway, he changed his mind, and I want, and wanted a Pepsi or Coke. I said, okay, super. I went off to the kitchen to get the drinks. And then, all of a sudden, the knock on the door, I heard. And he it was our son, Jacob, our daughter-in-law, Elizabeth, and our two grandchildren, Aaron and Stacy. Oh, boy. I came back. You should have seen Stacy. Oh, they are from. Oh, boy. But the arthritis... She was dressed in a tight-fitting skirt and blouse that showed her, I can't say the word dress, I say cleavage, cleavage, right? That's really cleavage. As they entered, our grandson Jesse looked up from his Nintendo game, and he stared at Stacy, mesmerized by her. What do you think? A cleavage. Jesse followed her all around her as she walked around the dining room table. He was like a, you know, a pest, like a little mosquito going around her. Anyway, after I asked everyone to take a seat, Jesse, of course, sits quickly next to Stacy, and he stays, stays focused on her breasts. So I said to everybody in the front of the table, I said, look, your mother and I are delighted to see all of you here tonight, and we hope and pray that we continue to have similar family gatherings in the future. Enjoy, Zets, let's essen. And uh, I said, the bracha first, the bracha to anoy, the hermel cholom, motzi lechem in our hearts, and the bracha to anoy, the hermel cholom, a bore prayer gafen. Then they said, amen, and we all sat down. Anyway, as all of us began to ask and eat, no, I saw that Jesse continued to stare at Stacy's, you know what, a frominous, you know, a breast. He didn't even eat. I, I couldn't take this any longer. I was starting to schwitz. I got up. And I went to the liquor cabinet and I poured a big glass of vodka, I shot a big shot of glass, glass vodka, I brought it over to Jesse. I shoved a drink in his face and I said, Here, yeah, Jesse, drink this, all of it, quick, quick, quick. No, Jesse drank it and then he fell back into his chair and he stopped staring. After I see that he got a little uh, tired, uh, you know, I, I looked up from after sitting down again, I said to, to everybody, Look, I uh, got to tell you, I, I learned yesterday that the hospital, my hospital, Mount Michigan, is going to be taken over soon by a larger healthcare company named Mount Everest Healthcare Corporation. And they're not going to keep it as a psychiatric hospital because they think they have enough inpatient units elsewhere in New York City. So in all likelihood, I'm going to be laid off. So Jacob, a son, asked me what I was going to do. I don't know. I don't know yet, but at least I'll have more time to be with our grandchildren. That's when another bomb dropped. Brenda, all of a sudden, tells everybody, and, uh, his, her mother and father, me, that she and Mark are going to be moving soon to the Washington, D.C. area. Mark just found out that he'd been hired by a major cybersecurity firm based there, and even he can do it online with the, with the pandemic yet. And they couldn't resist this opportunity. I said, how wonderful. Oh. Blenita said that they'd come home once in a while and that Sarah and I could visit them often. Plus, we could do FaceTime on weekends. Oh, the broker, I'm so happy. Oy. I said, sure, sure. That's when the second bomb dropped. Or the third bomb already. Jesse was the first. Jacob informed us that he and Elizabeth decided to move their family upstate to a less expensive area. It's like fiddle on the roof, they all gain, gain a vec. The rents in Brooklyn and Queens were skyrocketing, which they are, and there just doesn't seem to be any indication that the pace is slowing down. They had already given their landlord a month's notice. Since Jacob and Elizabeth worked at home on their computers, they could live anywhere they wanted. No, you know, they're likely to be the another 60% of the people going to live and work at home with the, the pandemic anyway. I said, oh, this is great. Is there any other wonderful news anyone wants to share? Sarah told me to stop it. Oh, seriously, we're not a roll here, Sarah. Well, you know, when it rains and pours, there isn't one cockamamie thing that is going right for us. We can't control one fucking thing. Oh, oh Sarah freaked out about my mouth. Brenda apologized. I said, you're sorry? And Jacob, you must be sorry too, correct? He was, given he has absolutely no control over what is going on with apartment rentals. I looked up at the ceiling. I said, Hashem, God, please. It's time. Throw that fucking media already. Oh, God said I thought I was definitely Meshuggah now. Crazy. 
I can't go crazy, Sarah. Mental health problems don't pay enough. Maybe it's better for me to, you know what? Boy, did I shock the cock out of my wife and everyone else. Oi. I got up from the table. I abruptly stormed out of the back door, out to the back door, to my bedroom. I couldn't take it anymore. So Sarah followed me to the bedroom and I, where I broke down and I, I cried. I had a big grave, like a cottage, saying cottage in my head. Anyway, I guess I made Brenda and Sarah feel real guilty. Sarah returned to the dining room and told everybody that I had been through a lot, that maybe I just needed a good cry. That's when all of a sudden the telephone rang and I heard the conversation from the bedroom. It was Daniel. Hello, Daniel. How are you? You what? Tell me that again. You just got home from the emergency department? What happened, Daly? You became so anxious that you couldn't stop thinking silly thoughts and doing silly behaviors? What's that? All your thoughts and behaviors have to do with multiples of 18? Huh? Please, Daniel. Make sure you keep the appointment next week with the psychiatrist and call us afterwards just to let us know how it went. Oh, yeah, we love you too, Daniel. Bye. <laughs> so that's when I returned. And Brenda asked me if it was, I was okay. I said, sure, I'll be okay after I get my colleague to prescribe me fuck it all, extend the release. Oi, Brenda and Mark went crazy too, listened to my, my mouth, but they apologized. No, I said, I'm the one who is sorry. Uh, I should have prepared better for these events. I guess I didn't see them coming. I went over to Jesse, who was like half uh, out of it, you know. She was, he was gonzo. And uh, basically I said, uh, oh, what did I say? I said, Jesse, uh, I said, please, uh, please, can you please, um, uh, I, I said, uh, um, you mind if I borrow your Nintendo Switch? I said, uh, thanks, Bubula. Now, everybody, um, I want to, uh, I want to uh, tell you that uh, I'm glad everybody came, and uh, everybody, thank you. And I'm going to head out now with the bathroom, Sarah. I'm going to take the, uh, the Nintendo Switch. I'll be back in about three hours.